Hey everybody, Mr. Toady here. I hope you and your families are staying safe and healthy during this COVID-19 emergency. Yesterday, the CDC released new guidelines uh, instructing Americans how to take more precautions to protect themselves and others to stop the spread of the COVID-19 virus. I wanted to make a little video today to show you how to properly use some of these protections, which I'm seeing more and more of in the past day of people using, which is great. The only thing is if you don't know how to properly don or doff, which is the words for putting on or taking off your PPE or personal protective equipment, it ends up not fulfilling the purpose you're trying to achieve with it. So follow along for this video on a couple simple, easy ways to protect yourself and your loved ones if you have to go outside uh, into public places. And remember, the best way to stop the spread of COVID-19 is social distancing, only going outdoors in public places when you need to, uh, and proper hand washing. So let's go over a few steps. Our first step to protecting yourself is definitely social distancing. So far the data has shown that social distancing is starting to work on keeping the number of COVID-19 cases lower than what it could be. That doesn't mean you can't go outside and you have to sit inside all day, but if you have to go into a public space like a grocery store or a gas station, maintain a safe social distance. The CDC recommends at least six feet in between you and another person right now, but make it 10 feet, make it a little bit bigger. And something just that I've noticed by going outside and doing a lot of hiking, uh, and traveling around through the woods is if you're out in a, in a secluded spot in a, in a forest hiking you don't necessarily need to have a mask and gloves on to protect yourself uh, because the trees don't carry the virus right we're talking about social settings where there's going to be many people around or even a few people you want to use these precautions to protect yourself so let's first talk about masks because that seems to be the big one that everybody's using and, and that's really what the CDC brought out yesterday. Again, follow the CDC guidelines, but here are a few tips for using masks. A mask is just as much to protect ourselves and as well as to protect other people. The signs of the virus are showing that you may have the virus and may not necessarily see signs and symptoms for up to 14 days, which means if you go out and are in social settings near other people and cough on your hand and then touch a shopping cart, that the next person that touches it might pick up that virus if it's still alive. So it's really important to use these protections in social settings like that. So using a mask in a public place is probably the most important way that to keep you from spreading the virus to others if you have it and you don't know. So right here is just our common surgical mask, which are pretty, pretty available. Um, and there's a right and a wrong way to take this off. So this is the outer side here, this blue side. And you'll notice the top has a firm piece of wire in it that I can bend in shape. And the bottom does not, and we have our two ear pieces. So the biggest mistake that I've seen people making in the past couple days of wearing these masks outside is they put it on and either these loops go over your ears, right? And you put it on in your car before you go to the store, and people are walking around the grocery store with it like this. It's not serving any purpose, and it's a waste of a mask, okay? If you're gonna have a mask on, you want it to cover your nose and your mouth and get as low as possible. You get it on here, you form the nose piece to your nose to get as best seal as you can, and that's that. The front of the mask is now considered completely dirty. So a couple big no-nos here that I've noticed in the grocery stores. People touch their mask and oh, want to get a fresher breath there, and then they put it up, right? That defeats the purpose. A lot of people I've seen wearing, even today a couple times, the mask down here just barely over their mouth. Again, you're breathing in through your nose, you don't have a good seal. Any contaminated air is gonna get in and around that mask. It's not serving its purpose. So when we're wearing masks, we want them up, covering our mouth and nose as best as possible, making a good seal, and we're not touching it until we're leaving the social space, like say getting into your car. Now the biggest thing to remember is, if you're wearing this like at the grocery store, the front of this mask would be considered dirty. So we don't wanna to touch the front of the mask with our hands. When we go to take this off, Carefully grab the ear loops back here, pull it away from your face, and again, that blue side, the outside, is the dirty piece. We don't want to touch that because there could be contamination of the virus on the outside. We'd properly dispose of it uh, in a trash can or a biohazard bin if you have those around, but don't leave these laying out in the parking lot. Again, the outside of the mask is dirty, don't touch it, just touch the ear loops pieces. And again, once you have that on, you want to leave it. Some other things that you could use as face masks, because not everybody may have surgical masks. You hear a lot about the N95 respirators, right? They have special filters uh, that filter out the virus and a lot of other bad particulates. 
I would actually recommend, and, and the CDC website would have more on this, but you don't necessarily need those to go out to the grocery store, all right? And those are actually, those masks, the N95s, which I don't have here because they're in really short supply, uh, are really important to our first responders, our healthcare nurses, doctors, medical workers. When we're working with patients who are positive for COVID-19 in close proximity uh, and doing high-risk procedures such as ventilating a patient, intubations, etc., we need those masks that have a higher level of protection for those high-risk procedures. So if you have N95s around your house and you're thinking of wearing them for protection, I would honestly consider donating them to your local fire department, hospital, uh, public health uh, board to try and get those to the people that really need them. Right, the average person who's doing proper social distancing and proper hand washing will be good with a surgical mask. Or if you don't have a surgical mask, I have some other things here. Uh, here's like a, a ski neck warmer, right? You could roll this up, cover it right around your your nose and, and mouth, right? And, and that's what you want to use to protect yourself. Again, not touching the front side when you take it off, just pull it right over. And you can wash it in actually the washing machine and that should do the trick. Same thing if you have a, uh, a bandana here, right? A lot of people have these around the front. Secure it so it's over your nose and your mouth. And this is nice, you can get a real nice tight seal. Again, we're not touching the front of the mask. We're just pulling it off when it's dirty putting it in the washer, washing it on high heat, and drying should really kill the virus. So those are some of your typical uh, pointers with masks, right? Never touch the front, always try and keep it on and don't keep it off until you're out of a social setting, otherwise it defeats the purpose of wearing a mask. So the next thing I wanna talk about is wearing gloves. Uh, and uh, you see a lot of people that are out wearing gloves in the past week or so, which is a good practice, but again, there's a right and a wrong way to wear gloves. So first of all, when we put our gloves on, and these are regular nitrile medical grade gloves, if you don't have access to these, I mean, even a good pair of uh, winter gloves, ski gloves, is gonna be better than nothing that you could wear, gardening gloves. So you wanna put them on, all right? And this is medical worker 101, the basics, the first things you learn is that you always assume the outside of your gloves are dirty. So especially, let's say we're going to our grocery store again, and you wanna wear gloves, that's perfectly great. That's a great idea. Just remember, after touching the car and other things, items putting in, the door, the outside of your gloves are contaminated, so anything you touch now is gonna be contaminated as well. And I've seen this in the grocery store parking lot where people come out with their gloves, they touch their shopping cart, and then we'll come over here, they touch their door handle, right? If you touch the door handle to your car or to your home with your dirty gloves, that door handle is now contaminated, you defeated the purpose of wearing gloves, right? And EMS, we change our gloves every time we leave the patient to touch a piece of equipment or to touch a door or to go into the ER. We're constantly changing gloves. So we need to remember that. If you're gonna use gloves, you wanna touch things only that are dirty and when you get into your car or even go to touch the door handle, either change gloves or take these gloves off uh, to protect those surfaces that somebody else may, unaware that you touched them with gloves, they may go and touch and get contaminated. So how do we take gloves off? especially with surgical medical gloves like this, there's a right and wrong way. So we wanna assume the outside of the gloves are dirty. So with one hand, you pinch, only touching the outside, pull that glove totally off, fist it up like this, get it inside here. With your other hand, again, not touching the outside, slip your finger inside the glove and pull it totally inside out. So that now you have a nice little safe container. This was the inside of the glove, so it should be clean. And again, you want to dispose of these properly. Throw these in the trash. Don't leave them in the parking lot in your shopping cart uh, for other people to either get contaminated or to litter the environment. So again, that's using gloves. And I would say the biggest thing is if you're going to use gloves, don't go touching everything. Don't go driving home your car with them and then open your door handle to your house with the same pair of gloves. Use fresh gloves or only wear gloves on public settings where again, other people may have touched things. So the last tip I want to touch on, and probably the most important next to proper social distancing, is washing your hands. Regardless of the COVID-19 outbreak, washing your hands is probably the best way to protect yourself from germs and other microbes that could really uh, mess you up and get you really sick. So there's a right and a wrong way to wash our hands, and I think people have gotten really good about this in the past couple weeks, but I figured, why not? Let's show you. So proper hand washing means using nice warm water, hopefully, Cold water works too, and some soap, right? So a little bit of soap, and we wanna wash our hands for 
at least 25 seconds. So I'm gonna start my timer here, get the water going, get a nice soapy lather. And you can see those soap bubbles. A couple things as we're washing our hands and washing the time. You wanna get in between all those fingers. You wanna get those thumbs nice and sooty. We could add a little more soap here. Get in between every thumb and finger. If you're wearing jewelry, like a wedding ring, you wanna take that off. If you have a watch on, get under there. And we got our 25 seconds here. So good scrubbing for at least 25 seconds like we've been doing. That's gonna keep going. And then rinse those suds off, all right? So proper hand washing should take a good amount of time. Get all of those areas nice and clean to get off any germs. Uh, some people do talk about hand sanitizers. Hand sanitizers are good in a pinch, but they don't really do as an effective job, at least as hand washing. A good hand sanitizer should be at least 70% alcohol to really be effective. So again, washing your hands is key. So those are all my pointers I have right now based on the new guidelines from the CDC. Again, practicing proper social distancing, washing your hands as often as you can, and now wearing a mask when you go out into public settings is gonna be the best way to protect you, your loved ones, and the rest of our community. So if you have any questions, feel free to watch out. Thanks for watching along here, and I hope you guys stay safe and healthy, and can't wait to see everybody back soon at school. See you around.